Thank you, Madam Chairman. Chairwoman, uh, first let me say I agree with the comments that have just been made, and that is that we have to provide some level of consistency uh, to the biofuel markets so that uh, investors will want to continue to invest, uh, lenders, banks, financial institutions, venture capital firms will, will feel safe about making an investment uh, in these plants. Uh, and we as policymakers, I think, need to do what we can to shore up the market so that uh, there's some consistency for those that are doing what it is we've asked them to do, which is to provide an alternative fuel uh, for our country. Um, and specifically, I'm concerned uh, with our ethanol industry right now, uh, as they have taken a hit. And I think it's extremely important, not only for that industry, but every other industry thereafter, whether it be cellulosic or others, that we hope to have, that that industry be successful um, not only for the jobs that they have created, but also for the psychological benefit that it has, uh, as we mentioned, with the investors and, and entrepreneurs wanting to invest in the next greatest, latest um, uh, uh, invention, if you will, when it comes to biofuels. With that said, um, I am pleased that in my area, uh, a group uh, called Biofuels Manufacturers of Illinois, BMI, uh, is in the process of starting a, a biodiesel uh, bio plant uh, right in my district. Uh, currently, they have uh, obtained all the necessary permitting, uh, the land rights, um, and uh, are ready to um, uh, build the plant. They actually have uh, contracted already with an end user for their product. So it is not pie in the sky, you know, trust us if we build it, if we produce it, someone will buy it. Uh, but actually, the, the farmer cooperative Growmark has agreed to buy um, their biofuel once it is produced. Um, I'm equally pleased that, um, unlike some of the others that have come and gone in terms of the, the new biofuels, uh, they have partnered with the, U the um, USDA lab in Peoria. Uh, Peoria, Illinois is home to one of four USDA agricultural utilization centers. And the researchers there have discovered a new crop, which is currently termed a weed, pennycress, which uh, has 30 per 36 percent uh, oil. Uh, in it as nearly twice as much of, of soybean, which is very exciting. Uh, equally exciting, I think, is the fact that it is a winter crop, which means it could be grown uh, right now when the land is dormant and not being used, thus uh, adding a second shift, if you will, to crop production into the agriculture industry. Um, with all that being said, uh, they have had you know, their hurdles, if you will, in, in uh, getting their plan online and, and getting this idea um, to be not just an idea and dream, but a actual reality. And I'm just interested in hearing from Mr. Faraci what your organization, specifically with biodiesels, can do for a group of entrepreneurs and, and individuals who have gone a long way in terms of the work and the investment uh, to help make that a reality. Um, Congressman, I know you've expressed a lot of interest in that project, and we, we, we applaud your leadership on that. Um, the National Biodiesel Board, we're, we're a feedstock neutral organization. Um, and this, the sort of research that you are talking about where they are where they're looking at pennycress as a potential oilseed crop is something that we are excited, excited about. We encourage that going on. And as you look at the industry it's, as it has grown to commercial scale, um, with each passing year you are seeing increased diversity in the feedstock that we are using to produce fuel. Yes, soybean oil is still a very pr important feedstock to us, but you are seeing more restaurant grease and animal fat. And now you are seeing things like camelina and pennycress that are coming online. Um, is, is viable feedstocks that you can use to produce a, a, a spec biodiesel that will be accepted in the marketplace. So we're extremely excited about that. Um, you know, our organization, uh, you know, with, the, with some of the things that you're, uh, among some of the things that these, these uh, enterprising individuals are probably going to run into is eventually at some point they're going to run into an issue with crop insurance. And we, uh, our organization does outreach uh, with that to, to help them so that they get covered underneath that program. Um, you know, there's also going to be a grower outreach component to it as well, because, like you said, they're rotating in. I let me leave that those would be acres competing with winter wheat. Um, so again, we do grower outreach to talk about the benefit of it, and there's clearly going to be a demand for this feedstock out there if it prices competitively. And you know, going forward, we'd be more than happy to work with you to to make this project a success. Great, thank you. What kind of help do you provide in, in helping? I know the other issue, of course, is our loan guarantees. Right. Um, you know, in terms of you know, just pointing them. You know, if we can, we'd be more than happy to visit with them, see exactly what they're doing, what their needs are, and see if we can't point them in the right direction in terms of uh, programs they should be applying for. Okay, great. Thank you.